cowgirl by her clothes. friends of mine, president of National Ice Council. You guys are about to be very, very busy doing your job the way you want to do them. Where are they? Where are those guys? Thank you, fellas. Thank you very much. We're in the middle of a crisis on our southern border. The unprecedented surge of illegal migrants from Central America 
is harming both Mexico and the United States. And I believe the steps we will take, starting right now, will improve the safety in both of our countries. It's going to be very, very good for Mexico. A nation without borders is not a nation. Beginning today, the United States of America gets back control of its borders, gets back its borders. Thank you. I just signed two executive orders that will save thousands of lives, millions of jobs, and billions and billions of dollars. These two orders are part of an immigration reform we outlined during the campaign. I want to emphasize that we will be working in partnership with our friends in Mexico to improve safety and economic opportunity on both sides of the border. I have deep admiration for the people of Mexico, and I greatly look forward to meeting again with the President of Mexico. We'll be doing that shortly. We will discuss close coordination on many, many important issues between our countries. This coordination includes the dismantling of cartels and keeping illegal weapons and cash from flowing out of America and into Mexico, out of our country, out of the United States, and it goes right into Mexico. They have to stop it. We have to stop it. We are going to save lives on both sides of the border. And we also understand that a strong and healthy economy in Mexico is very good for the United States. Very, very good. We want that to happen. By working together on a positive trade, safe borders, and economic cooperation, I truly believe we can enhance the relation between our two nations to a degree not seen before, certainly in a very, very long time. I think our relationship with Mexico is going to get better. Here's a brief summary of what actions are contained in my executive orders. The Secretary of Homeland Security, working with myself and my staff, will begin immediate construction of a border wall. So badly needed. You folks know how badly needed it is as a help, but very badly needed. This will also help Mexico by deterring illegal immigration from Central America and by disrupting violent cartel networks. As I've said repeatedly to the country, we are going to get the bad ones out, the criminals and the drug deals and gangs and gang members and cartel leaders. The day is over when they can stay in our country and wreak havoc. We are going to get them out, and we're going to get them out fast, and John Kelly is going to lead that way. Our order also does the following, ends the policy of catch and release at the border, requires other countries to take back their criminals. They will take them back. Cracks down on sanctuary cities. Empowers ICE officers to target and remove those who pose a threat to public safety calls for the hiring of another 5,000 Border Patrol officers, calls for the tripling the number of ICE officers. And you both do an incredible job, but you need help. You need more creates an Office of Homeland Security dedicated to supporting the victims of illegal immigrant crime. For years, the media has largely ignored the stories of Americans and lawful residents victimized by open borders. To all of those hurting out there, I repeat 
to you these words. We hear you, we see you, and you will never, ever be ignored again. As I travel the country, I had the chance to get to know mothers who have lost their children to violence spilling over the border. I want to thank the Remembrance Project, such incredible people, for giving these families a voice. They're called angel moms for good reason, because they are a voice to protect all of America's children. Their children have not died in vain, believe me. Pundits talk about how enforcing immigration laws can separate illegal immigrant families. But the families they don't talk about are the families of Americans, forever separated from the people they love. They don't talk about that, ever. As your president, I have no higher duty than to protect the lives of the American people. First, these families lost their loved ones. Then they endured a system that ignored them, while at the same time constantly rewarding those who broke the law. For these families, it's been one injustice after another. But that all turns around beginning today. We are joined here this afternoon by parents whose children were horribly killed by individuals living here illegally. I will now read these parents' names and ask them to stand. Many have become friends of mine over the last two years and have supported me so dearly, and I appreciate it. Mary Ann Mendoza, who lost her son, police sergeant, Brandon Mendoza. Fred Fundingburr and his son James, who lost Billy. Billy was Fred's son and James's brother. Billy's wa wife, Natalie, was also killed by an illegal immigrant, somebody that should never, ever have been here. <laughs> Laura Wilkerson, who lost her 17-year-old son, beautiful Josh. Josh was special. Where's Laura? Good. Laura. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Carrie Ruiz and Lucio Ruiz, Jr., who lost their young daughter, Felicia. Thank you. Beautiful, Felicia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen Ronnebeck, who lost his 21-year-old son, Grant. Thank you, Stephen. And we have many others with us from Remembrance and from other groups. And these are incredible people that have endured so much. And I just want to thank everybody for being here. Very, very special people. Thank you. Nothing can ever make their pain go away. But I want you to know your children will not have lost their lives for no reason. They've set this incredible goal for so many. These were great young people, and they will always be remembered, always. We will never forget them. And to the parents and loved ones, you kept the flame of justice alive. 
with your activism. Keep it going. And now, together, we will save thousands and thousands of lives. When it comes to public safety, there is no place for politics. No Republicans, no Democrats, just citizens and good citizens. We want safe communities, and we demand safe communities for everyone. We want respect. We want great schools. We want dignity and equality for everyone. And I will be a president, I promise you, for everyone. We will bridge our divisions, heal our wounds, and unify our country. And if we do that, if we work together, then there is nothing we cannot achieve as Americans. The future is limitless. Good luck to our new and brilliant leader at DHS, General John Kelly. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Congratulations to John.